traditions presented by DoorDash. And there are so many great ones here at Ohio State, Jeff. Go, Reese. Yes, there are so many, and it's hard to pick some. I had the opportunity yesterday to hang out with the director of equipment, Kevin Reese, who's, by the way, an absolute gem from The Ohio State University. And he told me all about the technology that they've implemented in the last 10 years to both optimize performance and minimize injury. Let's take a look. So first up, you're going to see me. I had cleats. So I put on these fancy and fun socks. Don't I look great? Yes, I know. They have grids on them. So when I stepped on the platform, it can take the exact length and width measurements and more to the millimeter. Now, one of the coolest things is they have a steam machine that eliminates the time usually needed to break in new shoes. Y'all, I'm really strong, so you can see I struggled with it. And look how great it looks. Wow, wow, it's beautiful. So up next, we had headgear, yes. And I put on this bedazzled swim cap with a chin strap just for y'all. I took one for the team. So Kevin could take a scan of my head for a custom helmet. You can see this 3D model that is used to ensure a perfect fit. And it usually takes a few weeks to make. But Kevin hooked me up with a Buckeye helmet. So um, anyone here want a Buckeye helmet? Look at that. Look at that. Reese, I think you're next for a helmet fitting. Are you ready for that? I am ready for it. A hundred years ago when I was a terrible that? high school football player, we just pumped a little more air in or took a little more air out. <laughs> that was so kind cool. of it. <laughs> 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 you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're fine. You're good. Get back out there, kid. Did you guys have the air, air pump? Yeah, we had too? those. Yeah. yeah. I go all the way back to what, what was it, like Gladiator water packs, yeah. you know, inside yeah. our helmets. I played with leather helmets. Leather helmets. I'm not sure what kind of headgear Marcus Freeman used, but he knew exactly how to use it twice. He was second team all Big Ten as an Ohio State linebacker. Made a big play against the University of Michigan there. That'll always endear you to the Buckeye crowd. And then how about the pick against Drew Tate in Iowa? Look, man, this is only 14 years ago, and now, which is 14, 15 years ago, Marcus Freeman was gracing the covers of the Ohio State game day programs, and tonight he'll be leading the Fighting Irish in here as Pete Thamel is back with us, trying to spoil the season opener and get his first career victory and hoping that his team, Pete, can in fact play like a champion today. Yeah, Reese, for Marcus Freeman and his whole family, today marks the culmination of a lifetime of work, and it's storybook for the Freemans that it's going to unfold in such familiar surroundings. I think I've always been a person that gets up early and first thing I like to do is, is get a workout in. I think it's been instilled in me since I was a young person. With my father being in the military, we had routine, we had structure. And then part of those days were him waking up, me and my brother up at five something in the morning and, and running in place while he finished his workout. And then we began our workouts. Those are memories that last forever. If you would listen to Marcus, you'd think that, uh, you know, they had to march back and forth <laughs> to school and things of this nature. And that's not the way it was. Uh, they had a lot of freedom, but, you know, we did have standards in our house. Born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, Marcus Freeman's dad, Mike, joined the Air Force at age 17. During his second tour in South Korea, he met Chong. They married in South Korea in 1977. Two years later, they came to the United States and eventually settled in Dayton, Ohio, where they had two boys, Michael and Marcus. It's an ultimate display of sacrifice and selflessness. That's what I think about when I think about my mom and her journey to the United States. I think about her working multiple jobs, her getting up early to go to work, and you know, for us to help her work her third job, uh, you know, being a custodian. I wanted them to see me, how hard working mom and daddy survive in this country. When their kids was little, I said, I want you guys to go to college, get a degree and a professional job. Marcus always say, Mom, I don't need to go to school. I want to go play football all day long. The confluence of discipline, work ethic, and ability gave Marcus Freeman an opportunity to play college football. As a recruit, he chose Ohio State over Notre Dame and Michigan. My heart was for the Buckeyes and 
when he chose the Buckeyes, I was very happy. Number one, Marcus Freeman again. After a short stint in the NFL, Freeman returned to Ohio State as a graduate assistant in 2010. His ability to connect with players and maximize their production led to a precipitous rise. From Ohio State to Kent State to Purdue to Cincinnati before taking the Notre Dame defensive coordinator job in 2021. In December of that year, he ascended to head coach at age 35. Usually in the morning, I try to really reflect on the things you got to get done today. And, you know, this is obviously a day that has been in the making for a long time. So let's get going, um, you know, and begin this, this process to this 22 season. When you're on this field, in between the white lines, we choose hard. Everything we do. Everybody good? Let's go to work. Day one, let's go to work. He finds little moments throughout the practices or things like that. Like, he makes an effort to be able to connect with each guy. This is your last day one. Last day one. Yeah, let's go. I never had a coach be this close with me. He really is a player's coach. I just go to him for anything. I can go in his office. He's always open, for open ears for everything. We will have you ready, Game Week. We'll have you ready, Game Week. I promise you that. But from now until then, we have to go, and we have to build, and we have to build, and we have to build. So we're just going to do more and more and more. So we got to understand that, OK? This is what it's going to take to reach our goals. Let's keep going to work. Let's go, baby. Let's go. The stadium Marcus played in and his dad worked at as an usher in the 1950s is the same place Marcus will usher in a new era of Notre Dame football, just not on the sideline the Freemans are accustomed to. It's not about my time at Ohio State. That's not what it's about. It's about taking this football team and this program to a Columbus, Ohio to face a great opponent. And guess what? There's no better way to measure yourself than to play a great team like Ohio State, and I'm excited for it. Reese, true to form this morning at about 6.45 in the hotel, I bumped into Marcus Freeman coming back from a four-mile run. He did, not me, I can assure you. He was dripping in sweat. It was one last pre-dawn workout before everything comes to light today in the shoot. And people look forward to seeing Marcus come out there. He's really, uh, really become part of the Notre Dame family quickly. Remember, he's only been there for one year. He's defense coordinator for one year. And what opened the door for this the first Notre Dame coach to leave of his own volition for another college job in more than 100 years. And Thomas Berry in 07, 1907, left Notre Dame for Wisconsin. Freeman steps in, 36 years old. Ooh. Big stage here for the new Notre Dame head coach. I'm going to wish Coach Freeman real good luck in his obvious job because he's going to need it. This is it. The last three part, for, for, the last three time head coaches at Notre Dame, the last three head at Notre Dame were all fired. Yeah. Jerry Faust, Bob Davey, Charlie White. Mm. Mm. Good luck. Well, I've, I've known Marcus since he was in high school. He's a Wayne Warrior here in, uh, down in the Dayton area. And this guy is born to be a leader. You can feel that when you listen to that, that feature, and you, you listen to his background with his family. This guy was just blessed to be in this position and to be able to take advantage of that. He's a great defensive mind. He's come up through the ranks and learned from some great minds. But what separates him to me is his ability to get his team ready emotionally. You can kind of feel he's got like a zen-like calm about him as he gets his team ready to go. In this environment, at a team and a school that he played for and was a great player, I mean, how, how, it's almost like you're writing a, a, a novel or a yeah, script. Yeah. But I want to ask you is, how, what, if you're a first-time head coach and he played in the bowl game, this is truly his first game. Coming in here against this offense, what's the thing he has to do to give himself a chance emotionally with his team that they can handle that scene out there? First thing he's got to do is tell his team they can win. Right. And believe it. Yeah. Because only, but then, but remember one thing is most important. He's playing Ohio State in the first game. He plays them. That's it. Yeah. They never play another team as good as Ohio State. Right. So, so they can build upon this. Absolutely. He, if they win, great. If they lose, we go from here. Go to the next one, yeah. boy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're a, about a 17-and-a-half-point underdog in the game, so a monumental upset if Marcus Freeman can lead his team 
to a win here. Make no mistake, Brian Kelly is an elite head coach. He stepped away, but Freeman has brought a different energy, particularly in recruiting, Absolutely. that might pay dividends for the Irish down the road. Uh, Marcus really making his debut, though he coached in the bowl game last yeah. year. There are other coaches making their debuts today, including at the University of Washington against Kent State. 